everyone, welcome back. So in this tutorial, you will see the online document summarizer. This is an app that was created with Dash and Langchain. Now this app trains the large language model on a specific web page or an online PDF, maybe like a Samsung user manual of a TV or an academic paper. And once the app is trained, you can ask it a question to summarize the documentation or to extract a certain part of the documentation so you can learn more. This, for example, was the Wikipedia page about Paris. Now, this is a very, very long page. Maybe you just want to learn something about uh, the architecture of Paris. So you just ask that question, and the large language model will um, answer it based on the most relevant part of the documentation. Same thing with like a, a PDF about like a, and a user manual. Have you ever had like a um, a user manual for your TV or for your um, washing machine, and you weren't sure how to fix a certain problem that um, you had. Um, so the best way to do it, instead of reading the whole documentation, is just um, train it with that PDF online, ask the question, and it will answer it. But it's only answering question based on that PDF, right? This is exactly what it says in the PDF. Because if you ask another question, what, where is Paris? It won't be able to answer because it's not trained on that type of information. Let's take another example here. This is a um, academic research paper about how AI uh, uses high amounts of fresh water, uh, endangering the uh, um, availability of fresh water around the world. So now if we'll take this PDF. You'll see this uh, is still thinking because it's not finding any constant about Paris, which is good. It was just trained on the TV manual. Now we're going to train it on the academic paper. We're going to ask it, how does AI use water? All right, we're going to do that. Submit. And now we'll see that it's going to look through the documentation and through the chunks, which we'll explain in a second. And it's going to um, use the most relevant uh, chunk of uh, text of documents uh, to this question, and then it's, go it's going to provide the answer based on the large language model that we that we used. All right, so this is part, and you can see the, the answer here, which is pretty accurate because it's based on this paper. Now, I'm not going to go over uh, the whole uh, app itself uh, using Dash and combining with Langchain because I really want to focus on the quick start, the retrieval chain section chapter of the quick start documentation on Langchain. A couple of weeks ago, we, we covered this part, the setup and the LLM chain uh, section. Now we're going to cover the retrieval chain because this is the heart of, of the app. But if you want to um, use the code of the app or you want me to create a video, all you have to do is go into the Langchain education, go into the online document summarizer. You'll see the code here. You'll have to down install the libraries. Give it a thumbs up. Once it has like 10 thumbs up, I'll make sure to create a video on it. For now, let's focus on the quick start section. Now this is going to use, you can read this first. It might help you to understand what we're going to cover. Um, and then make sure to download this Python file, which is pretty much um, the content from this chapter. Go to my GitHub. I'm going to put this under the video. Go to uh, Langchain. Quick start. A couple weeks ago, we did the LM chain. Now we're going to do the retrieval chain. Copy everything or download it and put it onto your computer so we can work on it together. Don't worry if it doesn't run. Uh, you'll have to install some libraries. I just want to um, uh, help you understand what's going on here. All right. Oh, and by the way, uh, short uh, commercial break. If you haven't done so already, another good reason to join the, the Charming Data platform is that. The mission of this platform, this community, is to help you progress in your career, right? We're going to do that by helping you develop your data visualization and AI skills uh, by working with others on monthly projects. There's many different projects that, that we do. We talk about them all together in the project chat space. We update each other on different uh, AI libraries that we've seen. And I typically give, give announcements here on a weekly basis of the content that uh, that I'm teaching. So come join, it's completely free and open to everybody. All right, let's go to the quick start section. 
retrieval chain. So what we're going, what we're doing here, let's run this code, this retrieval chain.py. I'm going to go all the way down. Let's run it. Python retrieval chain, and then we'll see that we retrain this document, this um, lang chain LLM, sorry, on the Paris Wikipedia, and we asked it this question, right? And now we can see the answer here is accurate in the 19th century. Paris underwent a significant transformation. This comes from the architecture uh, section of the uh, Wikipedia documentation. Now, of course, this is uh, static. We gave it the documentation, uh, the web page, and we gave it the question. Because we're not creating the app here, I just want to show you how this large language model works. All right, so let's see. First, we import all the libraries. And then we're using these two lines of code to incorporate our OpenAI key into our uh, into our app. Right now, this what it does. It's searching for the .env file, which is where I have this line of code. So I keep my API secret so nobody else can see it. You replace this with the API, put everything into the .env file. And then this will automatically um, find it and incorporate the API key into your large language model. So you don't have to declare it here. So it's hidden. Then we load our chat model, which is going to be our chat open AI that comes from Langchain underscore open library. Now that we have our LLM model, we're going to use the web base uh, loader, which is a module that we imported at the beginning to read our Paris um, uh, web page. Now we're going to load this into, I guess, a loader, which parses the text. Let's print this out. It's always good practice to print out and see what's happening um, under the hood. So we're printing out. Now loader.load, what it's doing, you see, it's just, it's just breaking up the text into, into separate words, right? Because when you go into the Paris uh, Wikipedia, there is a lot of things here that the computer cannot easily read, right? Like uh, sidebars, uh, uh, images, uh, links, um, and many other things that don't mean anything, these numbers. So we break everything down into just text that the, computers, the computer is, uh, can read with greater ease. Now that we have everything inside a long piece of text, we're going to use the OpenAI embeddings uh, module to um, embed the document into a vector store. Now, what does it mean to embed uh, text into a vector store? What all of this means is this section right here is you're going to turn all this text into chunks of, of code, into chunks of documents, right? Um, let's say we have here, I don't know, like 20,000 words. Now, this is a lot of words to, to feed into um, OpenAI. It's just too many tokens. There's too many words. So we're going to divide this into separate documentations, right? We're going to save this and run this again. And now you'll see that this is it's kind of hard to see, but this is divided into separate documents. Document. See? Document. This is a page content. Another piece of document below this one. This is what this section does right here. It just creates many different documents, which is just chunks of text, right? We just put different chunks of text. And then we're going to use the um, um, FAISS from documents uh, module to embed these chunk of text. And when we say embed chunks of text, we mean that we're going to turn these chunks of text into an array of numbers, right? This is what uh, makes it uh, allows the computer to read and understand what this text is all about, right? So maybe I'm oversimplifying here, but it may be that one chunk of text is about culture and one chunk of text is about economy in Paris. Um, and it can understand that by turning this, this text into just an array of numbers, an array of 1,300 or 400 something numbers that allows the computer to understand what this array is all about, what this chunk is all about. So now that we have our vector store uh, with uh, uh, the chunk of, of, I guess, arrays, we're going to create our prompt. Um, this is a very common thing you'll see in 
uh, when you're preparing your large language models, the system is going. You're going to give the system instructions to answer the following question. Uh, that we'll give it later, only based on the pre on the on the provided context, which will be this um, documentation. And here will be the question that we'll ask later. And then we're going to create this document chain. It's going to take. It's going to chain together the large language model with Chat OpenAI with the prompt. Right, so we're kind of like preparing the large language model to answer a question based on the context. Last but not least, we are going to create another chain that's going to retrieve the most relevant docs based on the question. So we have our vector store with all the arrays of numbers, and then we're going to retrieve the most relevant chunk based on the question. So if I ask a question about Paris architecture, every single document here that we see in the terminal um, is, a, I guess, like a separate uh, chunk. But it's going to compare and say, based on this question, which is also an array of numbers, what is the most um, relevant or appropriate uh, document to this uh, array of numbers? Is it the, the chunk of text about uh, administration? Is it a chunk of text about history? Eventually, we'll understand that this array of numbers is most similar to the chunk of text that talks about um, the Paris architecture. So it's going to take that chunk, it's going to um, take the question, and then it's going to respond or predict an answer. And then it's not really hard to predict an answer because if you have the most relevant documentation, the most relevant section of the Wikipedia to the question that you're asking, then predicting an answer makes it pretty, pretty easy. Right, so we're going to erase this, erase the print, and now we're going to ask just another question. Maybe we'll ask, um, "When was Paris founded?" Right, with a question mark, and save and run it again. And now we'll see that it will um, break everything up into separate uh, chunks of of uh, uh, array of numbers. Right. And then it will, based on that uh, question that we give it, is going to retrieve the most relevant chunk from the vector store, right? And then it's going to answer that question, saying something like, "Where is it? Paris was founded in the third century BC." So, this was what I wanted to teach you. I hope you learned a lot. Don't forget to cho uh, join the uh, Charming Data community, especially the Langchain Education. Um, give it a thumbs up. Uh, after ten thumbs, I'll give it. I'll, I'll, I'll create a video on this. Uh, but if not, just you know, take the code so you have your own app, which is right here. And if you have any questions, please under the video um, in the comment section. And don't forget to uh, turn on your notification for this YouTube channel and subscribe. Because next week and two weeks from now, I'm going to go over the remaining sections of the Quick Start uh, Langchain docs. We're going to go over conversation, a retrieval chain, agents, and uh, we might do a uh, Lang server as well. All right, everybody, uh, have a good one. Uh, and uh, always remember we're better together, so help each other out. Bye bye.